In fact, as of this morning, there was a report about the jet uh, wobbling as if um, it's sort of like uh, the the light beam from uh, a lighthouse uh, uh, that is uh, wobbling. And uh, we need to understand uh, what a new paper just documented something about 3i Atlas that creates a serious statistical problem. The anti-solar jet. The feature pointing toward the sun that's been defying solar wind for months shows a periodic wobble linked to nucleus rotation. The jet base is offset by less than 8 degrees from the rotational poles. That means, as the nucleus spins, the jet precesses along a tight cone instead of turning on and off as expected. The probability of this alignment occurring randomly, 0.005, half a percent, but it gets worse. After perihelion, when the original jet source rotated into darkness, a second anti-solar jet appeared at the opposite pole, also within 8 degrees of alignment. The probability of both poles having active sources positioned precisely to maintain continuous sunward jets. 0.0000225 millionths. Let's break down what this means. Before this paper, observers noted 3. I Atlas's anti-solar jet appeared remarkably stable no obvious pulsing or interruption as you'd expect if a rotating nucleus had vents turning toward and away from the sun. Natural comets show variability as jets activate when facing sunlight, then shut off when rotation carries them into shadow. 3i Atlas didn't show that pattern. The new analysis detected a small periodic wobble in the jet's position angle, confirming rotation while revealing the jet originates very close to one rotational pole. The wobble amplitude is only about 8 degrees, like Earth's midnight sun near polar regions where the sun never fully sets. A source near 3i Atlas's pole would stay illuminated continuously as the object approached, explaining why the jet never turned off. For the jet to maintain continuous activity without major interruptions, its source needs to be within 8 degrees of the rotation axis. The chance of the rotation axis being aligned within 8 degrees of the sun's direction when the object was beyond 5 astronomical units, 0.005 or 0.5%, improbable but not impossible, then came perihelion. After closest approach on October 29th, the geometry flipped. The hemisphere that was sunlit during approach rotated into darkness as 3i Atlas receded. If the jet source was fixed at one pole, it should have shut off. Instead, Hubble and ground-based telescopes show the anti-solar jet is still present just as strong, just as collimated, pointing sunward. For that to happen naturally requires a second active source at the opposite pole, also positioned within 8 degrees of the rotation axis. The probability of both poles having volatile reservoirs in precisely the right locations? 25 in a million. For this to be natural coincidence, you need symmetrical distribution, major volatile pockets at both poles positioned within 8 degrees of the axis at each end, precise alignment, rotation axis oriented so one pole faces the sun during approach, the other during recession, both maintaining nearly continuous illumination, coordinated activation, the first pocket venting during approach then becoming dormant post perihelion while the second activates seamlessly. Insulation, the previously active source remaining dormant despite continued solar heating. Each requirement individually is improbable. Together they create compound improbability of 0 0.000025. That's not impossible. Low probability events occur, but it demands acknowledging how unlikely this configuration is. Beyond alignment probability, there's the physical question of how the jet maintains tight collimation out to half a million kilometers. Solar radiation pressure and wind should disperse material, broadening the jet and pushing it away from the sun. Yet observations show the anti-solar feature staying narrow and directed across distances exceeding Earth-Moon separation. Natural gas jets broaden at the observed wobble period of 7.74 hours suggests the full rotation period might be 15.48 hours if the anti-tail originates from a single active spot. This matches earlier brightness variation estimates. For a nucleus radius of approximately 2 kilometers, that rotation creates centrifugal acceleration of about 0.0025 centimeters, roughly 2.6 millionths of Earth gravity. 
too weak for artificial gravity purposes. Even if the object is larger, say 10 kilometers radius, the centrifugal force remains minimal. So rotation isn't about generating internal gravity. It's simply the object's natural spin state, which happens to orient its jets with remarkable precision relative to the sun's direction. If 3i Atlas were artificial, a modified asteroid adapted for interstellar travel aligning thrust vectors along the rotation axis makes engineering sense. Stable orientation, minimal wobble, continuous thrust capability by activating opposite end thrusters as geometry requires. The observed behavior would be expected design, not improbable coincidence. That doesn't prove artificial origin, but it highlights how observations requiring compound improbability for natural explanation become straightforward engineering if the object is controlled. Sometimes the simplest explanation isn't natural, but statistically unlikely. It's artificial and operating as designed. This isn't isolated. 3i Atlas is heading toward Jupiter's hill sphere with 1 in 26,000 trajectory precision, optimal for gravitational interaction. Combined with anti-solar jets defying solar wind for months, persistent collimation across half a million kilometers, dual pole symmetric sources with 0.000025 probability and post-perihelion course correction timing, each anomaly alone permits natural explanation. Together, they form a pattern where every improbability aligns in ways that would be deliberate design choices for a navigating object but require extraordinary luck for a passive comet. Why does mainstream astronomy avoid discussing these statistical improbabilities? Not conspiracy likely paradigm resistance. Acknowledging compound unlikelihood opens uncomfortable questions. Easier to focus on individual elements, address each with plausible mechanisms, and avoid calculating cumulative probability. But science demands confronting uncomfortable data. Whether 3i Atlas is natural or artificial, the dual pole alignment probability is 0.000025. That's measurement, not speculation. Pretending that number doesn't matter because we prefer natural explanations isn't skepticism, it's avoidance. The observations are real the statistics are calculable, and the pattern keeps adding improbabilities that individually stretch credibility, but collectively demand explanation beyond, we got really lucky with a comet. What's your take on the dual pole alignment? Extraordinary coincidence or something requiring different explanation? Share your analysis below. Subscribe for updates. The numbers are what they are.